Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Both those conversations kind of make you feel pretty yeah. pretty sick. But, um, yeah, I, I I did it. I did it at a mum's house because I knew her mum was there and, you know, she wasn't essentially alone. Yeah, um, that's nice. I don't know if there's a good place to have that conversation, but I sort of felt like at least, you know, mum and sister were at least there to look after her. Mm. Um, yeah. So, and, oh God, no, go and, and and I was still, you know, still trying to play basketball, and mm. I I vividly remember turning up to a training session and sitting in the car park, and, and I text my coach saying, "Hey, I'm I'm running late." And when I got to training, I I parked my car and just burst into tears. And I I cry. I I don't know when this is in the time frame, but it was during the basketball season. And I cried and I cried and I I cried. I couldn't get out of the car. I was kind of paralysed in the car. And I realised I'd been there for quite a while. And then I started to freak out about, oh, my God, my teammates are going to finish training soon and they're going to come out and see my car parked in the car park and I haven't been at training. Like, um, and, and I was still crying and I fucking – I couldn't start my car. I couldn't actually drive away and I had this, like, overwhelming sense of, oh, my God, I've got to get out of here. And and this paralysation that I I fucking couldn't do anything, like, and and it's insane. It's uh, it was an absolutely insane feeling. But I was embarrassed. Hmm. Um, I was ashamed of myself, like all sorts of things. And all I could think about is I cannot let my mate see me like this. And, and I I don't know. I've never felt so alone. I've never felt so ashamed. Hmm. And it was just all these all these emotions that that were happening while well, I was trying to play serious sport. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's powerful, and and I appreciate you being vulnerable because it's powerful because there's a lot of people out there now who are young who are playing at the high level that you did, uh, who either get told or have the internal uh, mentality to get on with it man up i know we're in a space now where people can be a little bit more vulnerable and safe to do so because uh, we embrace it a little bit more but nevertheless i know there is some that still grow up going you know i need to man up i need to whatever you've just created a safe space for you, not only for yourself but, but for those who are listening who go through the anxiety the depression the insecurity the fear of the unknown or whatever it may be that they're struggling with to go it's okay to reach out it's okay to feel more importantly to feel like this because they, they put a dampener on their own feelings and that they shouldn't be, you know, like mental health or mental fitness, I like to call it, is um, that there's something wrong with you. No, it's okay if you have a bad day at the gym. It's okay if you have a bad shooting day. You keep shooting through it, right? You, you keep lifting the weights or you keep working on yourself to, to deal with these situations in a real healthy way. Um, so, you know, even though you did go down that line of depression, thoughts of suicide, you, you're here to tell the story and you're here to share that it's okay to be open and vulnerable and to be more importantly, really down. It, you're going to, you, you you know, you might go through these undesired emotions at 50 and at 60. So it doesn't mean just because you're young that you, or you're old or older that you don't, that it's not okay to go and embrace these things, you know, and have these difficult conversations as your scenario uh, was, you know, I know you don't hope to have one again, but guess what? You might have to, right? And we have to, we have to be okay with that and open to that and have the skill sets, even at cellular level, 
to be to to take us through those moments right and and embed it to your students or embed it to your nieces and nephews who are 14 and 18 you know and and this is why we're doing the podcast so people can watch it and hear it even if it's in a year's time and go hey he played at a good level he's six foot you know we, we talk about your height yeah. and six foot seven being a big bloke you know <laughs> It's okay that you're a big bloke playing a good pro sport and you've done what you've done to still feel what you felt, right? Does that make sense? It, it does. And you're, you're probably touching on like what became, you know, it, there's there's obviously a turning point. Like, yes, in the depths of depression, I managed, I managed to make a decision that, was good for me. And the, the fucking sad part is, man, is a lot of people aren't able to make, you know, a decision that, that keeps them here. What you know, was that decision? The, what was that part of that? What contributed well, to making that part decision? Well, then? well the, I, don't, I honestly don't know. I, I, I don't know what made me decide to have the hard conversation because I really didn't like confrontation. Mm. Um, and, and I, I did make the decision to have the, the hard, hard question, yep. the, the hard conversation and then go through the, the, the pain of then having to deal with what came from that conversation. Hmm. All right. I, I did do that, but then I got through that and thought I was fine and I was not. Hmm. Okay. I. Like I said, we go back to we jump back to my career. So my basketball career. At the end of that season, the the coach cut me. I got cut from that team, and I was really really disappointed. You know, I was fucking doesn't know what he's talking about. He's making a bad decision. Blah blah. That coach that cut me. I am now his assistant at Geelong United. <laughs> Good decision, hey. coach. <laughs> yeah. So he's oh, – I, I coach with him. Yeah. Oh, in hindsight, he made the right decision for his team. And I – it took a while, but I have absolute full respect from that. And within the first six weeks of coaching with him, I apologised to him for how bad a player I was in that season. And – explain to him a little bit about what was going on in the background that he probably knew nothing about. There was only one or two mates on that team that actually knew the full story of, w of what was going on. See, that's the key though, isn't it? For me, yes, you might have been performing poorly or if that was the, the contribution to you being, the decision being caught. I mean, he might not have had the time, it might have been the stage of his life, his career, his knowledge of leadership and anybody's leadership, not just personal to him. Um, but digging deep and just asking somebody, is everything okay? Mm. That that could have gone a whole different route, right? Because you do you think? I mean, you. I, I would have lied to him. Yeah. Okay. I, honestly, I, I like. I think. I think I'm connected enough to. I, I would have lied. I would have utterly lied. Yeah. And okay. I can't even guarantee that he didn't ask me if I was okay. Sure. Like, yeah. 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 You know, like. Um, How did he respond but, when you told him this time? I, I think, I think he was a little bit shocked at the depth. Yeah. Like he knew stuff, he knew stuff was going on, but I don't think he knew the the details of. Like I said, there was there was only one or maybe two guys on the team that knew the full depth of where I was at, um, and. Uh, maybe they didn't even know the, the absolute, you know, they certainly didn't know that I was contemplating yeah. some pretty bad shit. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the other thing that I did want to, want to say from, from your previous comment, you know, I, I probably spent after, after that, I was, I was single for eight years. I, I went to the middle East. Um, I, Met in that eight years, I met some really nice people mm -hmm. and started some relationships, um, and sabotaged 
every one of them. And it wasn't until I met uh, um, met a girl that she was really nice, mm -hmm. really, really nice girl. And I got to a point where I was like, I actually don't like the way I'm treating this girl. She deserves better. But I couldn't stop myself from being a bit of a dick. Mm. And um, and I actually went and sought some professional help and decided that I needed to put work into me and fixing some of the baggage that I had so that I'd stop hurting people like like this girl. Now, ultimately, that relationship ended. Mm -hmm. um, her and I didn't talk for um, a few years, and then we we rebuilt the friendship mm -hmm. um, later on. Um, she she ended up passing away from bowel cancer, but oh. um, we we did build that friendship and I was able to be a friend to her while she was going through that. Oh, that's amazing. That really, really shit time. So, oh. and then ultimately I'm, I'm, I met Kim like, um, the same week that I broke up with that girl, I met my wife in the same week. I'm glad you 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 found something within yourself to get to get professional help. Was there? How did that feel? What was the sense of achievement from from doing that? Because a lot of people don't go down that road, right? Because of pride or for whatever reason. Hey, it, it's it's really funny. I I remember you know like you you talked about you talked about something before, and all I could think about the hardest thing about going for a run is putting on your shoes, right? Hmm. So there's a couple of things that I've wanted to do in my life that I found really hard. And then once once you knock that first domino, it's really easy. So so one, I really wanted to start kickboxing. Mm. And I found it really, really intimidating and scary to make the phone call and walk into the gym for the first time and and meet the meet the trainers and the, the owner of the gym. And I made the phone call to that gym and the dude was awesome. He's like, yeah man, come down. Like, you know, I, I had a mate that had been training at the gym. He's like, yeah, Dave's told me you might call and and I go down and met him. Like one of the, you know, big tough, big tough kickboxing instructor. Um, you know, martial arts expert, one of the genuinely nicest humans you'll ever meet in your life, and they became, you know, they became family. Mm. And it was all, it was all in my head about what I was expecting. Yeah, it's not like I was stopping myself from doing something. And I, I, I trained in that kickboxing gym for about five years and loved every every fucking second of it. And like I said, they became another family and just genuinely good humans. Yeah, man. And then the other one was making the phone call to get professional help, men, men, mental professional help. And um, I, I did some research. I asked some questions. I found the person that I really desperately wanted to, wanted to, um, you know, start this journey with. And I reckon I had their phone number for about a week before I actually made the made the convers made the phone call. And um and I I got off the phone and I felt like I actually felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. And I actually felt more positive and I hadn't, all I'd done is booked a fucking appointment. Like it was ridiculous. Like it was just, you know, that first step. Okay. I'm, I'm now doing this. Like if I decide to do something, I'm doing it. Like, so in my head, it was like that. I made the phone call and fuck man, I'm, I'm going, I'm fine. It was like, I'd already had a session just by making the phone call. Um, yeah. 
And that's and that's um, everything that one seems to be picking up from every guest. You know, it's it's those making those small, simple steps rather than making a big change, which is, seems draining and hard on the body and the mind. If you just make those small, simple steps, um, uh, the next step is even e- is 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 easier. And those two steps, then you when you look back and you go back to your mind before you take the first step, what seemed really hard is now a hundred times easier. And I think yeah. it's like that new year's resolution thing by week three, it's gone because you've set yourself for too hard of a goal. Whereas what you've just said there, making a simple call, once you put that phone down, that sense of a light, um, and light and, and be enlightened weight off your shoulders, let's say you, your whole paradigm changes, doesn't it? You know, and you can, in the next stage would be walking to the office. I'm really nervous, but once you've walked out of that office, whew, even more weight's been taken off your shoulders and that's the stepping stones to getting better or whatever it may be for your personal scenario, your personal journey. Yeah. It was, it was also really funny. Like, so I was, um, I was still dating this girl and I actually, the girl that I was with before I met Kim. Mm. Um, and I actually told her, I, I told her the whole story. Um, and she was like, she was super supportive of it. Like, obviously, she, you know, she was really invested in this relationship, whereas I wasn't on the same level she was on. Mm. And and that was that was part of it. I I really liked it. She was an amazing, lovely, you know, she had so many good qualities. But we just, I had issues stopping me from getting to the level she was on. And, yeah. and um, but we had um. We we ended up having so I I would go and have a session every Tuesday or every second Tuesday whatever it is, and and I actually ended up saying look, on a Tuesday I I, I can't see you, I'll call you when I'm going, and I'll speak to you on my way to the appointment, but after the appointment I I just need time. I found it really draining, like. When, when you're going and you're doing that work, I, I actually found it really draining. It was emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, there were days that it was much more emotional than others. and But I, I, I found that I just needed time on my own after that meeting, and I'd call her the next day. Like, and, and we got to a point that there was – there was that rule in place. As well. We obviously weren't living together or anything. We had our own space, so I could just go home. Um, uh, I could go home, I could go to my bedroom, watch TV. Just shut off, yeah. Not watch TV. I could just be with my own thoughts, process what had just happened. Um, And I found it an amazingly helpful experience. And the thing that it did, I think a lot of people expect from professional help the answers. Yeah. And I don't necessarily, I didn't get all the answers, but what I got is recognition of things that trigger me and can set me into my spirals of depression. Hmm. And not only that, some tools to help me not stop it. Because once you start, like, the, you know, you can't just click out of it. It doesn't just go away. No. But if you know your triggers, you can f- understand it coming on. And then also getting some tools to either minimize it or some processes to go through so that it doesn't last as long or you're not, it's not as deep and those things. And I find that has been the absolute winner. It's not that I don't get down. Yeah. I I, I don't think I get anywhere near as depressed as what I used to, but you said it before. Some days you have bad days. And, but what I'm finding, I'm not having bad weeks. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I might have a bad day. I might have two or three bad days. Um, the biggest thing that I tell myself is the sun comes up tomorrow. Either way. And, and all that means is I get to try again. Yeah. Yet today might not have been my day. But tomorrow the sun comes up and I get another chance. And maybe that's only going to be 80%. But if yesterday was 60 and today's 80, 
Awesome. I'm doing a bit better. And I can just have a crack at every day trying to be the best I can be that day. And that's and, and that goes back to the simple steps, isn't it? And and that's why leading our own way was created was because I don't want people to get the answers from the guests. I want people to see that they are that feel that, that they're not alone, that it's not that it is completely normal to feel what they about what the feelings what they're going through, sorry, um, and to take the tools and turn those tools into what works for them or throw away the tools that don't work for them and they can spin it into something that meets their own personal scenario. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because there'll be people out there that have been through something similar to you or not, but that's okay. They'll be able to take pieces of it. And that's why yeah. this is reason why I really want leading our own way to, to reach as many people so people can hear genuine, authentic people like yourself who have this persona that everything has to be great and because they're big or professional or whatever it is that they do, that they are normal people and it's okay to feel what you can. And what that piece of advice you just gave was, was is, is beautiful. It's spot on, absolutely spot on. I like that scenario of the sun. I'm actually going to write that one down. I'm going to use that one for the guest, Jim. I've got a few actually from you, mate, to be fair. Um, mate, the day the sun doesn't come up, I'm fucked. Yeah, well, we all are. Right? Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to turn to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so coming towards the end then, before I ask you my uh, my questions, how we close the episode down, you've come away from all of this, you break up of your uh, uh, relationship, you've gone to the Middle East and so on, you come back. Is this the, the, the turning point, the motivation that helps build your first business? Yeah, I always knew I wanted to design gardens. I, it's, it was my passion for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I already had Candio Design um, running, but I sort of, I got back, I was probably back for maybe, maybe two years. Um, you know, met this girl, started to get some real help. Um, yeah, I think the timeline lines up. Like it was, yeah. Um, you know, like it is it two, is it three? I'm not 100 percent sure, but mm. um, yeah, started to get get this help during that time. So, in this, this happened in the same week. I I broke up with that that girl. I met Kim on. Now wife, and I won my first gold medal at Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show. Oh, amazing! And all in the same week, like it was, it was crazy, yeah. and it felt like it all came off the back of me realizing I I I couldn't do this alone, and I need needed help some professional help and we um that that gold medal transformed my very young business wow. it just changed changed yeah. the level of work we did um i yeah. went on to do nine years exhibiting at the melbourne international flower and garden show in a row um one three gold medals, won best use of plant life, won all these awards, and it just catapulted my business to a point where, like, and part of that, I met people. Like, at one of the garden shows, I actually met the owner of London College of Garden Design. We were both doing a garden at a show in Sydney, um, and we just – we met the first year. I didn't do a garden. He did a garden. I just went to see the show. Um, the next year I did a garden at the show. He did another garden. We met, got along really well, hung out, became friends, stayed in touch. It, you know what I mean? Like these, Amazing. these opportunities just kept evolving. And, well, that's because you opened um, your mindset to it as well, right? And you worked on yourself and you, your perception changed of yourself and your life going forward. You, you had, a, I suppose, that positive mindset uh, and you didn't see the darkness anymore. You changed your brain wiring, I suppose, right? 
Yeah. So, mate, our sports psychologist talks about your, uh, you know, he talks about your light as a like a torch, mm-hmm. and and it's where you want to shine your light and your focus on. Yeah. And you know that's that's where you're going to head. So it's an it's an awesome analogy. He clearly fucking talks about it a lot better than what I do. But yeah. if if you know where you want to head, like it's not a beam like that. You know, there's a lot in there that could be caught in your beam or your light if you want to follow it. And mate, I, I just. You know, I've said it a couple of times. I say yes and work the rest out later. Like the opportunities that have come up from that that one week, you know, the gold medal. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, I say one week, but it it started with that that phone call to yeah. get some help. Another pivotal and, moment in your life. Yeah, and and now, you know, um. My my career has changed. My business prospects have changed. Like everything's changed, and now I'm sitting here going, you know, what is next? Like I'm now. It's it's been nearly. Uh, it's four and a half years since the college has opened. Mm-hmm. Um, first day of college. First day of lecturing was the first of March, twenty twenty. What a nightmare. <laughs> And now look, well, I, that was leading my question really towards the end of it. What does the future life uh, stretch? Um, I, I, honestly, I, I don't have any absolute answers. Mm. I want to keep building this business. I've got um, some other things that I'd like to, you know, like to actually have a crack at as well. Um, more business, other business sort of ventures. Yeah. Um, but ultimately my goal, mate, like everybody is to earn more money and work a bit less, but, um, you've got to enjoy doing it though, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm loving, absolutely loving what I'm doing with the college at the moment. Um, and it's been a really, really nice change away from, you know, just designing gardens and, and working with clients and things like that, like, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I I love what I do. I just at, after eighteen years, I probably feel like I've needed a little bit of a break. Yeah. Um. I'm still doing some of it, but this year I haven't been killing myself to get. Yeah. You know, like at the height of my business, we were designing, you know, up to eighty gardens a year, and this year I'll probably design twelve. Fifteen, maybe. Yeah, well, you like, might do twelve yourself personally. You might have done eighty personally before you did the school. But now, how many how many students do you have in each class? Twenty times two, because you have, and you have two classes, right? Yep, that's forty. Hey, yeah. Each of those will have the eighty themselves one day. If they create their own businesses and follow to some extent your path. Boom. Do you know what I mean? How many yeah. how many gardens are you changing there? It extrapolates out, yeah. yeah. And this and is, sorry, go on. Yeah, it's it's amazing, mate. I, I a couple of years ago we had our first student um, do a garden at we call it Mifkus Melbourne International mm-hmm. Flowering Garden Show, um, and she did a garden in the Emergent Garden Competition, um, and it's like the next generation of garden designers coming through, and she did a garden, and she won the category. Amazing. And I honestly think I was more excited about that than when I've won categories before. Like, mm-hmm. I lost my shit. I was crying. I was trying to video. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, it was amazing. It was absolutely the best feeling. And then this year in March, we we had two students do a garden um, in the student garden category section, and they won their category as well. Same thing, like absolutely over over the moon. I I am finding so much joy yeah. in seeing our students experience some of the things that I've experienced, and 
and the positivity and the opportunities that come from winning those things mm-hmm. um, and seeing the the excitement of them, you know, like those students that won this year ha- are building a garden literally in Victorian Parliament for the NGIV, the Nursery Garden Industry of Victoria, to show the our politicians how important horticulture is to the community and things like that. So, yeah. like, you win a student category and then all of a sudden you're meeting politicians and, you yeah. know, like, just amazing opportunities. Well, you being upset there for somebody else winning it, you, uh, you contributed towards that. And that's, I think, um, you know, I live my life by the four C's, connect relationships, family, peers, friends, whatever it may be. And that's connection there in itself with the relationship with that person. But also see the second C is contribution, giving to the world. Um, and the third C would be cope, sleep, exercise, and mindfulness. And then fourth C, cook, you know, eating good food. And all those things contributing live to that contentment of life. And that's where you're, you're you getting upset seeing somebody else rather than you winning. It's because, well, there's proof within itself. If we contribute to the world and we give to the world, you actually get a lot from it. Um, so yeah. I don't believe there's a, a, a an unselfish act. If you want to look at that as selfish, it's not selfish, but you know what I mean. Um, it's it's powerful stuff what you've done there, and that's the the power of you coming out and the way you came out when she went and won that award. Yeah, um, it's amazing. You're doing some amazing things, Brent, and I, I think hopefully maybe there's a lot of people who are close to you and the world that you're in and the world that we're in together. Maybe they don't know this side of you, so hopefully they will get a lot from. They will get a lot from from you um but two questions before we go one liner if based on your scenario and what you've been through in your life what piece of advice could you give to other people that are are experiencing or have experienced similar things um i I, i'd probably try and reassure them that the emotions are okay yeah yeah feel you're allowed to feel what you're feeling um yeah yeah it's it's probably the biggest thing. Like I don't know, it, Aussie males. You know, you got to be. You said it before. Man up. Yeah. I mean, you're like, man, there's there's plenty of men that try and man up and and end up not in a good place. So yeah. it's actually okay. It's it's fine. It's fine. And um, you know, they say talk to someone that that ain't necessarily easy no um it's the steps before isn't it yeah because i understand like i completely understand the you know black pants blue pants i can't make a decision this is stressful like Mm. i understand how how bad it can be at the at the bottom but you're allowed to feel what you're feeling and Mm. you know if if you can have a conversation with someone awesome but just baby steps don't make big decisions. Agreed. Agreed. Finally, then, what do you think your purpose is now? Then, do you think you've discovered your purpose? I think um, you already know the answer to it, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm really passionate about. If I'm going to do something, I've got to be passionate about it. So I just hope whatever my purpose is, um. Well, I probably won't do it if I'm not passionate. So there'll be passion involved. Mm. Um, and I just, mate, I, I just really want to enjoy life, have some fun, experience fucking everything I can, the good, the bad, you know. Yeah. I've experienced some bad. I really like the good. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's still plenty of goals that I want to achieve personally For sure. that, that drive me and motivate me every day. Um, some of them are personal, some of them are with my wife and um, yeah, I just, just want to, I think as long as um, the world keeps giving me stuff, I'm going to keep giving some stuff back. So, uh, well, I think it comes to you because you're giving the stuff, right? That's what I've discovered, man. I didn't realize this, that when you start giving back because you feel like you've been quite privileged then you get more stuff and then you feel like you've got to give more stuff back i didn't realize it was a Mm. a catch-22 so yeah um yeah i don't know man just well 
while it's enjoyable, I'll, I'll keep doing it. And if I feel like I'm being appreciated, I'll keep doing it. And um, if I'm having fun, I'll keep doing it. So Beautiful. Yeah. The, an awesome way to end the show. Um, stretch. Um, I appreciate you coming on. And you can see I'm trying to get in the habit of calling you that. Brent. <laughs> um, no, thank you for coming on Leading Our Own Way. You've created a safe space, not only for yourself, but for everybody else as well. That's the whole point of, of the show. Um, I think one thing I can take away from that is, um, from today is, put my shoes, don't be worried about putting my shoes on before I run and, and don't worry about the color of pants that I'm going to be putting on each day. Um, it's either going to work or it's not. How bad can it be if we, uh, I don't know, you know? So thank you so much, Brent. I, I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for being a part of my journey and, um, and, uh, hopefully we can help many people that have, are going through the things that you've, you've been through so, too, you know, from relationships to sport, to building a business, um, you're clearly leading your own way in, in, in both areas, your family, your loved one, Kim, your basketball with the Australian team and yeah, phenomenal things stretch. I really love it. And, uh, I hope you've enjoyed being in the low chair. Mate, I, um, I, I have enjoyed it. It's, uh, been a bit emotional, but Mate, right. thank you for providing an opportunity for people to tell their stories and, and the leadership that you're showing. And, mate, just hope that, you know, if there's one person that hears any of these stories and and gets something out of it, that's got to be a good thing, right? That's that's all I need is one person to get something from each of the guests, and I'm, I'm happy and I'm enjoying it. It's hard work, but I'm, I'm loving it, which makes it easier. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. and thanks for sharing your nice words. I, I really appreciate it. Um, well, until next week on the next guest, uh, please come back for more and uh, and um, come and listen to Stretch and, you know, and share the word and spread it out because you never know, you might just know somebody who needs to hear it. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks, Stretch, and um, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way and we'll get you on next week's episode.